three days until one of the most important elections. The outcome's going to shape our country for decades to come. And the power to shape that outcome is in your hands. If you want to stop the destruction of our country and save the American dream, then this Tuesday, you must vote Republican in a giant red wave. President Biden and former President Trump, both in Pennsylvania this weekend, making their final arguments. The roundtable's here to make their own final arguments. Former DNC chair Donna Brazile, former Trump Justice Department spokeswoman Sarah Isger, Democracy for America CEO Yvette Simpson, and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Welcome to you all, and here we are down to the wire. And Donna, I want to start with you. The economy, far and away, Absolutely. the top issue. Our ABC News Washington Post poll, 43% of Americans say they're now worse off financially in the last two years. That is pretty astounding. Why has that not been the number one issue on the campaign? You even heard Cory Booker this morning not talk about that, essentially, not focus on that. Well, you know, Martha, so you have to take a look at the entire country, because I do believe that whether you're talking about abortion, which is an economic, uh, economic issue, and why? Because when you are pregnant, and I haven't been, so I'll defer to those who've been pregnant and helped, that's an economic issue. You have to go to the doctor. You got to have health care. So these issues are on the table. And by the way, the Democrats have addressed them in Congress where it matters and trying to uh, get the supply chain back back in line, make sure we have baby formula. So it is an issue. Democrats understand that. But this is a very very serious election. We're not just talking about the economy and inflation and crime and immigration, abortion, voting rights, but we're also talking about what took place on January 21st. I have not been able to put this in my recycle bin. You know why? Because the same people who gave us this are now on the ballot in all 50 states. So while we're talking about kitchen table issues, which are very important, we also got to talk about democracy itself. Is that the right strategy, Chris Christie? No, and they're going to lose. I mean, look, when, when you don't have anything to say about the issues that the people care most about, what you try to do is set a fire someplace else and distract them. Um, but it's not working, and, and it won't work. Um, the fact is, when people go into a supermarket... But talk about that. People do care about democracy. They I do. I didn't say that. It, look, they don't care as much as they care about the other things. And the, all the polling shows that. And I'm not splitting the atom here, okay? All of the polling shows that what people care about the most right now is the economy and inflation. That's what they care the most about. And so, in, in the end, I, I, listen, I admire Donna. She brought props this morning. She tried to do everything <laughs> she can to distract people from what is the issue, which is they cannot afford to go to the supermarket, they can't afford to go to the gas station. They cannot afford to pay their bills. And when that happens, everything else goes to second place. And Republicans have no answer for that. The reality we'll is, see. is if you're bad off now, if you can't buy gas, if you can't buy groceries, you're going to be worse if Republicans win. They have no solution. And I think you're right. I think Alyssa Slotkin is right. We should be messaging on the economy. The economy is better when Democrats are in leadership. And Republicans so only So you care. kind of agree with Chris there? I, well, I, yes, I, think, you do. I think... Say yes. I think we should be talking about it. I disagree that his party is a better position to take care of it. And we should say that. We should say, what are Republicans going to do? They don't have to answer the question what they're going to do. They're talking about ending social security. They're going to make it worse. So to everybody out here who is worried about the economy, no, you might be bad off, but you'll be worse if Republicans win the House or the Senate, period. What do you think of the strategy, sir? I what don't Donna understand why about. Democrats didn't run from the beginning saying, we're talking about the economy. The Republicans are the ones passing these laws in the states on abortion. Why they ceded that whole ground to the Republican Party. And look on the democracy issue. Yes, you look and a, a majority of Americans think democracy is under threat. 80% think that if the opposition comes into power, that America as we know it will be under threat. But when you ask them which party is the greater threat, independent voters by about seven points think it's the Democratic Party, not the Republican Party. So while Joe 
Joe Biden is talking about how democracy is on the ballot, I don't know that his message is landing the way he thinks it's landing with these voters who are going to decide the election. And, and Donna, those are incredible statistics from Absolutely. that poll, that, that each side thinks the other is responsible for it, where I think that's an issue that Democrats thought was all theirs. Look, look, look uh, I, I'm not running campaigns anymore. I run my mouth on television, which, you know, sadly, I can't do a lot about what's going to take place over the next two days. But I want to ask the American people, who's on your side? That's right. Who's out there fighting for you? Who's out there trying to lower your prescription drug prices? Who's out there trying to make sure that you get a raise in the minimum wage so that you can afford the groceries and the gas when you go, when you leave your house? The Republicans they don't refuse. Think that's Joe Biden, no, no. Though, because of everything he's done refuse, on energy. That's not They refuse to raise the minimum wage. It is poor people and low income people who are being because squeezed. Because inflation has raised the minimum wage because now you have to pay $20 to the grocery store. Well, what, what, what drives inflation? It's not just what, who in Washington, D.C., we're being, this inflation is being driven by huge demand at a time we had two years of an economic you know lockdown. Uh, uh, I think Chris, listen, I'll, take, that, that, I'll, that, take Larry, I'll, I'll take Larry Summers' word for it, okay? Um, Larry Summers, Clinton's Treasury Secretary, told the Biden administration two years ago, you go ahead with the spending you're talking about and you are going to create enormous inflation. And it's exactly what happened. And we can try to blame it on a whole bunch of other things. But when you put five trillion dollars that you printed into the economy after all the money that we put in during COVID, that's why you have inflation. And, you know, the fact is that it's got to stop at some point. And the Democrats don't want to talk about that because their constituencies oh, yeah. are all about pay me more. In the end, in the end, Sarah's right that they ceded this ground to Republicans because they knew that Joe Biden couldn't articulate the argument as to why he was better. That's why they have him in Union Station talking about democracy. Could you go to a safer, large D Democratic place than the middle of the District of Columbia, send him over to Union Station, and put him back in the White House before he causes more harm? Or send him to Scranton, which is the only other place in the country he can go. Yvette, earlier in the year, Donna said that abortion would be a defining issue yeah. in the fall. Yeah. It has fallen. Yeah, Republicans are running away from it. We didn't anticipate that, right? So they realized this was a problem. They don't, they're not running ads on abortion. They're not, they're not they're talking about abortion on the debate stage. They're avoiding it. They realized very quickly, and they retreated, and we let them. And I think we just have to continue to remind people that a 10-year-old girl having to carry her rapist child to, to birth is inhumane, and it's wrong, and Democrats, that's what's happening. Democrats and women misread who, this moment. No, it was never no, about Republicans abortion. Are running from happened it. at the same time that gas prices went down. You can track the Democrats' poll numbers going up and down with gas prices. It's not that abortion faded. It's that there's no particular evidence it was ever going to be a meaningful issue when we had already sorted show ourselves me, over 20 years of this. Show me issue. one Republican that's talking about it. Well, first of all, they're talking about the it. The the vote, the wait, wait a second. Why would Republic? Why would no, no? Republicans made the decision to do something unique. If you actually want to win elections, no, 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 no. Let me finish now. If you want to win elections, you talk about the things that the voters care about, and you look at this polling, and what they care about is economy, inflation, crime. That's what they care about, and that's why Republican candidates are resonating, not running from anything. We're running to the voters and what they're concerned about. Chris, it's also about a vision. What's your vision of America's future? It's about your value system. And I think while it's important that we follow where the voters are leading us, because absolutely, they decide. That's why so many of them have That's voted democracy. early. It's also about vision. And this is about the vision of our future. Yes, this is a prop for some Americans, but for me and for millions of Americans, it was a reality when people stormed on the United States Capitol because of a big lie. So yes, all of these issues are on the ballot, and we're just going to have to turn out and see what the results are. I want to turn to that here. Keep yeah. talking about it through Tuesday. I want to talk about spe specific race in Georgia. You have been down there campaigning for Raphael Warnock. What do you? It is so close down there, and you have the accusations against Herschel Walker. Do you feel like people will vote for Herschel Walker because they like him or because they just want to hold on to the Republicans? It's all about power. Um, nobody's loving Herschel Walker. I mean, he is not the one. And in fact, I've heard a lot of African Americans down in Georgia say he's an embarrassment to us. I mean, he is a, he's a, a sideshow. He's being used. He has all this scandal. He's a, he's a representative of a, of a figure that, that 
some Americans think black men should be, and we don't want that represented. Raphael Warnock is an amazing human. I can't imagine why people in Georgia are making this choice. I think some of it is nostalgia. We saw what happened with Tommy Tuberville in Alabama. Football matters, apparently, in the South. But guess what? He is not fit to be a senator, period. What we have seen in Georgia that I want to comment on is record turnout in the early vote. Two and a half million people voted early in Georgia. That's more than 2018 and 2020. So I think we're all thinking it's going to go according to the polls. I think new voters and early voters are going to win the day. For how, how about African-American voters, Donna? Ed Rendell, the former Pennsylvania governor, told the New York Times he's worried about African-American turnout, that black voters have not been significantly motivated to vote. Well, enthusiasm is, is, is hard to come by, especially if, when you don't talk to people that you need to get out until the last two or three weeks. So I'm hoping that African-Americans will hear the message, hear the music, get the lyrics and go out and vote. And if they do, we know what happens, especially when black women vote. Democracy is always on the ballot for us. But I want to go back to candidates. Candidates matter. And it's not just Herschel Walker, it's Mr. Oz. Uh, and, and Pennsylvania is Mr. Vance. And so I do think that Democrats have a fighting chance both in keeping, uh, keeping the Senate uh, and, and very might well, you know, not lose as many seats in the United States House. And Chris, I know I'm going to get to well, your soft spot. Well, Baby, we're going to get some of them governor seats. And well, just, just hold you'll get, on. Just you'll get Maryland on. and Massachusetts. Um, okay, after that, I'll I'm not take so sure. two. But, I, but let me just say, I was in Georgia too on Thursday and Friday. And what's driving the politics in Georgia right now is the governor's race. Yeah. And, and Governor Kemp is going to be reelected. He's going to be reelected by a surprisingly large margin. And that's what could really wind up helping Herschel Walker, um, is that Kemp is going to do much better than anybody has predicted he's going to do all the way through. And the other, the other upset and surprise you're going to see, I think, on Tuesday night is Joe O'Day, the Republican candidate for the United States Senate in Colorado, is going to beat Michael Bennett. And that's going to be a huge surprise. It's going to be a candidate even, who does not have the support of Donald Trump. He does not have the support of Donald Trump. He flat out said that he believes that Joe Biden was the legitimately elected president of the United States and, and had Trump attack him. And in Colorado, he is driving Michael Bennett to distraction. He's going to win the race. Sarah, I want to see if you think there are going to be any surprises or people have really made up their minds. So I think it's important to think about these polls the undecided voters are still in these polls. So when you see a 41, 45 poll, there's, you know, five, seven points outstanding of folks who haven't made up their minds yet. We don't know how they're going to break, but generally they all break in the same direction. And I think it's a fair assumption that they're going to break toward the Republicans at this point. So, yes, you could see Colorado, where, by the way, Chuck Schumer and Democrats spent millions trying to have a different Republican candidate, an election denying candidate in that race. Yep. Uh, Washington State for Senate, Tiffany Smiley, the Oregon governor's race, and obviously those races in New York, the governor and the House races, where you could have the head of the Democratic Congressional Campaign he's, Committee lose his seat. I campaigned for Mike Lawler against Sean Patrick Mone. He's going to lose, and he's probably going to lose by five or six points. Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about Donald Trump. Last night in a rally and earlier in the week, he said, I promise you in the very, very, very short period of time, you're going to be so happy. And of course, he was talking about 2024. And since then, it's been reported that he will likely make the announcement to run the week of November 14th. We have about 40 seconds here. Got to ask you, Chris. I, you know, look, is anybody surprised? No. Like, why no, should anybody be surprised? Mean? No, I don't no think one's it, surprised. Look, I don't think it means anything. When something happens that you anticipated happening, it doesn't make any difference. He's going to run. Everyone always knew he was going to run. He can't miss the attention. Um, any more than he does, and he's going to run. Now we'll see what happens. And that does that make a difference? Jail. <laughs> In about 20 seconds, is Joe Biden the best guy to go against him? You know, anybody over Trump, I think. You know, I think anybody over Trump. Anybody over Trump could win? Anybody, anybody. I think Joe Biden has to recover from this year. I mean, his, his approval rating has jumped slightly. Uh, he still looks a little tired. I think if we can get his energy back, maybe. I, I don't know. Okay. Thanks, all of you. Uh, we'll all be holding our breaths this week. Thanks for joining us. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.